Hey everybody, it's Minister Lou. Happy Thursday to you. Whew. Right now we are reading out of the book of Acts together. Excuse me. We are on chapter 3. Let's just jump into this together, shall we? Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. So his family would carry this man there, so he could ask for money. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. So he looked at them. He was like paying attention. He started listening, like, Okay, these guys are going to give me something. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, I give, such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. The disciples just performed a miracle in the name of Christ. And he, leaping, stood up and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And the, all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at which had happened unto him. So like other times, the people in the temple, they knew that guy. They seen that guy frequently asking for money. They knew that he was paralyzed. Couldn't use his legs. And now they see him walking, leaping, and praising God. Whew. And as the lame man which had healed, well, excuse me, as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, and all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? He's like, why are you looking at us like this? We didn't do this through our own holiness. This isn't something that we had the ability to do. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, have glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. So he was like, this came from Jesus, because our God powered and glorified his son, and we did this through his name, and you guys denied him. And you didn't want Pilate to let him go. And he wanted to let him go. Pilate wanted to let him walk. And you didn't want nothing to do with this. But ye denied the holy wind and the just. And desired a murder to be granted unto you. And killed the prince of life whom God hath raised from the dead. Whereof we are witness. So he's saying. You denied him outright denied him and wanted murdered the prince of life you wanted him murdered but he rose from the dead and we witnessed this and his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong whom ye see and know yea the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. 
So he's saying, by the faith of Christ, this man has been made whole. He's been made sound. To be in the presence of you as a statement of he is who he says he is. And now, brethren, I want that through ignorance ye did it, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should be that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So they're saying it was prophesied that Christ was going to suffer. And he fulfilled this prophecy as well. <coughs> I believe over 300 prophecies of the Messiah were fulfilled by Christ. Repent, the, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ which before was preached unto you. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. So he's saying that Moses even made this prophecy. <sighs> yea, and the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. Ye are the children of the prophets. And of the covenant which God had made, excuse me, which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son, Jesus, sent him to bless you, and turning away every one of you from his iniquities. Okay, I need to stop. I got a bad habit of wanting to continue reading. But wow. So he's <clears throat> essentially letting the Jewish people have it. He's laying straight out what happened, what they did, and what was prophesied about Christ. After having this man healed that they knew was lame. Or handicapped, paralyzed, however you want to put it. In the Bible it says lame. In my Bible, it says lame anyway. But wow. The disciples of Christ get into some stuff. And we will get more into that as we go along in this series of the book of Acts. I thank you all for taking the time to come and hear the word of God. For me to be able to share it with you. I do enjoy sharing the word of God. what he wants done and I'm so willing to do it. Anything that he wants I'm willing to do. But sharing the word is important for others to hear. Especially those who don't have a Bible or don't want to read it or they have a problem of understanding the Bible. I think that's what I'm here for, to help people understand what's being said and what's going on. Because I know there's some words in here that are just like, ooh, what's that word? I ran into that one when I first started reading. I had to have Google up and start, you know, finding translations of what's this word mean? What's the definition of this word? That old English, I tell you, they could get you. But once you learn it, you got it. But that's neither here nor there. Excuse me. The kingdom of heaven is at hand, everyone. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is coming back one day. None of us know when. As he said, none of us would know when. But in my heart, I know that he's coming. The signs of the times are just too clear. He's going to come, and he's going to gather his children. And those who are left upon this earth, after he gathers his children, are going to be judged justly 
and we're going to face his wrath. And I don't wish that upon no man. I believe everyone should be with the Father. Or I would like everyone to be with the Father, but that's not what's written, and it's not my will. It's his will be done. If you're not ready to meet Jesus, it's time to repent of your sins. To turn away from what the Bible calls sin. Just leave it. You don't need it. Begin storing up your treasures in heaven. It's time to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, as the Son of God, the one that God sent to us for our redemption, for us to have a way to be reconciled. For he died on the cross paying the price for every one of our sins. A death that I would deserve and that many others, all of us, would deserve for the sins that we've committed against God. And he didn't take himself down from the cross either. He could have. He had the ability to call down angels to save him. But with no sacrifice, there is no reconciliation. None. And he was our perfect sacrifice. Who rose from the dead three days later. God had that happen. And he was seen by, I believe, over 500 people. And his disciples went to the grave saying that, no, he resurrected. It's not a lie. And we all know if you're tortured enough when you're lying, you'll eventually tell the truth. And these men went to the grave. He rose again. And there was never a body found because it went to heaven after his resurrection. <coughs> It's time to come to know who our Heavenly Father is, guys, and how much He loves you. I love you guys. Jesus loves you guys. And our Heavenly Father loves you guys. Shalom.